Hi. What if I were to tell you that Vodun and his wife have a dog? Your reaction would probably be, well, I didn't read about any of this in the Eddas. Is this true? Then you start to think it through, you know. Vodun's wife is Freya. So Freya likes cats. Why would they have a dog? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Vodun, or Odin, is his wife Freya? Or is it Frigg? Or are Frigg and Freya the same person? That's another video. And how about Jord, the spirit of the earth? Odin came together with the spirit of the earth and made the mighty thunder god. So is the spirit of the earth his wife? Well, my point is, Odin, he gets around. And around these parts, his wife is Volda, also known as Frau Holle. And they indeed have a very ferocious dog. I am today talking about a very local legend around these parts that I'm walking in today. Near the village of the Lutte. I'm here to tell you the story about the hellhound of the Lutte. The Cardus of the Lutte, which terrified the local people. Now, there's actually still a bronze statue in the city center of the city of the Lutte, which refers to Vodan and Holda's hellhound. I actually went there and it had a nice little plaque. Let's take a look and I'll read it to you. Cardus or hellhound. According to German mythology, this hound is linked to Wodan and Holda. So it's linked to Odin and Frau Holle. The Cardus hound or hellhound used to stand next to the farmers in the Lutte. It's seen as a ghost animal. It was often seen in the Duvedal and the Paasberg. If you saw the hellhound for your uh, home, death or an accident will befall you. It was often seen as cemetery in cemeteries, and it was seen as a bad omen. So, the legend is that this hound is seen by locals, and if you see this Cardus or Hellhound, then you will die or you will get a giant misfortune. There are farmers who, one farmer who saw the Hellhound and who fought with it and who came out on top and he came back to the village. He says, I defeated the Hellhound. This is such good news. I don't even have any scratches on my body. And two days later, the guy just dropped dead. But it wasn't necessarily that if you saw this Hellhound that uh, you would die. Sometimes your farm would burn or somebody in your family would uh, die. Um, funny thing is when I was near that statue and I was trying to record a video about this hound that brings death and misfortune, the mic uh, that I use for these videos actually broke while, while I was recording the video. Which doesn't mean that I shouldn't do the video. I think it's more a sign that I should give it some more time and think about it some more. Because videos about legends like these, I'm only going to do them once, so I might as well think them through some more. And to be perfectly honest, it was the height of summer back then. And actually here, there are actually two seasons. There's a horny season and there's the spooky season. And the Cardus, the Hellhound, is all about death. It's all about spooky. So you shouldn't do a video about that in summer. But now, as you can see in the back, it's really luscious autumn weather. We are going through the cycles and we're moving towards spooky season. We're going to Samhain, where the spooky season will really start and the winter will really start. So this is a good time to make this video. So, often seen in graveyards, often seen as a bad, bad, bad omen. What I always like to do on this channel is I like to look at what this could mean spiritually. What is the meaning behind this myth? And then we have to look about just the ingredients of this myth. 
because you have three ingredients. You have Wodan, Volda, and the hound, and to a lesser extent, the people who seen the hound. Uh, now, Wodan, I don't think he needs an introduction. Most people know him as the god of wisdom, the one-eyed god, the raven god, the shield shaker, the wealth friend, the god among gods. He has one eye, wears a hoodie, likes to travel, you know him. The second one is Volda, or as we know him here, know her here, Frau Holle. Um, I also get a bit nervous when I have to talk about local deities and local legends, because I know for a fact there are some people watching this video who could probably explain it better than I can. But I, I will do my best. There will, in time, be a separate video going in depth to Frau Holle, and I'm actually going down because that's what Frau Holle is all about. It's the underground. It's like a local version of the goddess Hell, in the sense that she takes care of the underground and she takes care of the souls before reincarnating. She um, punishes those who are lazy and she blesses those who have been working hard in their lives. Um, but it's underground, but it's also deeply some magical and spiritual subconscious energies. I think I actually know where Odin gets his wisdom. No, it's not near me as well. I think I know. I don't think I'm supposed to tell you this on the internet, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is what I think. Odin constantly travels. We know he travels, but it's not just travel that he goes around the world and realms. He travels also inside himself. He constantly goes between the known and the unknown. Now, he does that, of course, most famously in his story where he's, you know, hanging against the world tree Yggdrasil for nine days and nine nights. But to a lesser extent, that's his whole life. He goes towards the unknown. And then he comes back into the known. And then he distills what he finds. That's where he gets his knowledge. That's why he's constantly traveling. Now, I think... That the people who saw these hellhounds, you know, it's human nature to want to live a good life. To have like a wife and some kids and a farm and to make sure that everything just goes right. And sometimes we erect walls in our lives, you know, like the walls around Asgard, only even bigger, on the inside of ourselves. Because we don't want to travel to these dark parts within ourselves. Now these dark parts and this subconscious and this death, sometimes the literal death, but sometimes the metaphorical death, you know, that's Volda, that's Frau Holle. <coughs> <coughs> but if you do that, if you stop blocking the natural flow of life and just accept well, not just accept, but somehow, instead of being afraid that you'll drown, just taking the plunge and learn to swim. Maybe that's a good metaphor. To get the darkness, to not run from it. That's how you get your wisdom. That's how you get your growth. So maybe these people who saw this hellhound, this karatus, I actually like that word a lot, karatus. Who saw it it was a reminder to them that they were not developing their wisdom and not letting go and going into this unknown inside of themselves and sometimes outside of themselves because some of them literally had to die so maybe that's the connection because all our subconscious vodan madness and wisdom they come together you have the cardus as a helper of these two deities. That's what I think happened. Now I do have still have some bonus features for you because we haven't talked about the dog itself, the Cardus. Now um, you can see it in the thumbnail. Have you noticed anything? Because 
it has pointy ears and it has a pointy like snout. Does that remind you of anyone? No, it is a deity, but it's not from, from the Germanic pantheon. It's not even from the Nordic. It's not from the Celtic. It looks suspiciously like Anubis, the Egyptian god, with the head of a dog. Now, to make things clear, the artist that made the statue that's in the thumbnail, that's in the center of the village of the Lutte, he didn't just uh, make a, any dog. He based it on eyewitness accounts. So everybody agreed that it looked like the way it looked. That it looked like Anubis. And Anubis is, right? The god of the underworld. Here it is again. You have a trifecta of going into the underworld. And maybe, maybe this is the right time to start talking about darkness in the underworld. Because... If you look behind me, the trees, they might not tell you yet, because they still look green. Maybe a bit yellow. Maybe they start to color a little bit. Winter is coming. And from what I've been told, it's going to be a very dark winter. It's good to think about the dark times that are ahead. And like I said, don't be afraid that you'll drown. See if you can swim. Maybe some of you will come into unknown territory. That's okay. Be like Wodan. Go there. Come back. That's how we become wise. As an individual person and as a society. And maybe here in Western civilization, we have built our walls far too high and we have been far too lazy and far too prosperous for too far of a long time. And maybe we need to taste a bit of this unknown. Just some thoughts, just words. It's just vibrations in the air. That's all this is. Maybe. So uh, that's all for this week. Take care. Make sure you don't uh, see the Cardus or the Hellhound running around anywhere near your house. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.